basically we're under a um, we're under a, a wide range corporate attack. They want to they want to gut our benefits. I mean, you, you got many people who worked in the plants that uh, suffered through the long layoffs of the 80s and 90s and come back to work, and their you know their their rights have been repeatedly taken away from them in the plant. They're working harder and harder and harder, and uh, um, now it's getting time for many of us to retire, and it's like. Well, now after sticking with all, through all this crap for you know nearly 30 years, they want to come along and uh, gouge your health care and your pensions, and it's you know it just seems like they're uh, the corporation's taste for concessions is um, it's just basically unlimited. It's pitiful the way you've been treated. We forced to go way across the street to the damn freeway bridge to, to protest. And I remember the days we used to march through the convention with, with signs. I mean, this is a period of democracy. This is a period where you're supposed to express what you want. They use and they pitting us one against the other. And uh, they're being creative about it. Viva, yeah, I'm concerned that uh, through these negotiations, a, attempt, a real attempt is going to be made to take the retirees' health care and give it to the union. Uh, like GE has done. But right now, our main concern is this. We are being under siege and under attack by the corporate chieftains of the auto industry. And war has been declared upon us. And this convention should give us an opportunity to come out with a strategy about that. Now my, now my main concern and what I'm hearing back at home is about the health care. Why are we concerned about health care? Because Wagner, and I'm speaking on GM right now, Wagner has told us he's coming after health care. The analysts and the think tanks have told us that the auto industries are coming after health care. The media, big headlines saying GM trying to tame the corporate beast. They're talking about health care as if it's some kind of beast. Our health care, you know, we're being told that we're uh, uh, legacy costs. We're people. We're human beings. We're not legacy costs, you know. So uh, these are things I'm not hearing, you know, the 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 the, the anxiety and the frustration and the determination to, to address, you know, the things that's, that's happening with the corporation. But don't and you I just think, have to give that up to make the companies competitive, the state competitive? How are we going to bring new business in here if there's all that? Well, we've, we've been there, we've done that. We need some new strategies. This situation is, uh, this is unlike, even when many of us in, eight, in the 80s fought against concessions, but this is nothing like what we had to face back then. This is a whole new ball game, and we need some new strategies to deal with it. But again, I think that if we keep our, I think that I, I, I feel that we as people, and whether you're auto worker or not, we need to keep our eye on Delphi because if Delphi goes, and Delphi haven't been part of GM, and we have haven't had the. Uh, being the gold standard of union wages and benefits, I, I think that we should keep our eye on that to see what corporate America will do with the rest of the working people. Unfortunately, it seems like at this point the UAW is just kind of a dead union. I mean, it's, it's, um, I mean, like you come to a convention where delegates should be, delegates should be speaking up and like, you know, it seems to me like nobody wants to speak up as it makes you a target. You, know, you don't want to. You don't want to fall out of line with what your, uh, right. you know, your top level leadership wants. For one thing, you don't get an appointed job that way. If you're looking at a union career, you got to shut your mouth and go along with what your leadership wants. It's kind of like it's okay for the ship to sink, but don't tell the captain it's sinking. But I'm gonna tell you what. It's the conditions that's really where the line is going to get drawn, you know what I'm saying? When the water quits being water, uh, the jobs are already quit being jobs, homes is quit being homes, you know what I'm saying? 
houses is no longer houses, no more communities, you know what I'm saying? So uh, the issues are turning into conditions and it's expanding. Because we all playing copays now and all, on, on, on a lot of things and we didn't pay copays, we all got to make monthly contributions to the uh, to, to the uh, to this account, you know, that's been set up called Viva, and uh, so we got a real dangerous trend going on, and we, uh, I think that's the main issue we got to deal with. There's not enough exposure of these different forms that division comes in, and the UAW is talking about uh, <clears throat> uh, what's that race to the bottom? Well, they in the fast lane and they leading it. Um, I'm concerned that if they uh, if they take a, 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 a block of money and turn it over to the union, and then the union is able to save a few jobs from South Eddie House, where they don't have no layoffs, that they'll gladly take these take this money and assign some union reps to to administer the, the retirees' health care, which is a dangerous thing. At least looking at it from my standpoint. Um, which is a biblical standpoint. The Bible says that uh, you know it's not for the children to lay up for the parents, for the parents for the children. It's not my job to live off my kid's back. You know, I'm supposed to try to uh, leave him something more than I would have. You know, in other words, don't sacrifice your children to keep something for yourself. It's not a, it's not a very wise or very, you know, and, and it's not the moral high road. To I'm raising that because I think we need to be battling for national health care. Well, I'm just saying that I don't think that a lot of the delegates here, for whatever reason, are really articulating at this convention the way the people back at home really feel. Because people are frustrated, they're very anxious. Being from Flint, the way our community has been devastated, and the threat of the Delphi bankruptcy, and we're calling it Del we're calling it uh, Hurricane Delphi, and that threat and that cloud is still hanging over the heads of our community. And this is a, con a main, main contributing factor to the rise of crime and the other social uh, pathologies and things that's confronting the high divorce rate, the, the high percentage of children in foster care, and all of these things are. Uh, a consequence of the corporate downsizing and the corporate abandonment of our cities. I think a lot of people feel these things, but I'm not hearing these concerns being articulated at the at this convention. And I think they should be, so that our negotiators can go to the table with these things on their mind about the way we feel about what's happening to our jobs and you know our community. What we're seeing is the root for a new historical epic. You can't have this much decay without any progress. And you got the middle class falling down to the working class and below, so uh, the issues are there and they're gonna expand. So uh, we got some issues to deal with. HR 676 is what we need to be battling with. So, but, but in order to, for them to understand what they're doing in here, they got to they gotta know that we can't win this at the bargaining table. We don't need to give up nothing else on the bargaining And we need to take all our effort into the street and, and win this battle for national health care. So chances for another historical epic uh, looks brighter and brighter. The electrical manufacturers have refused to bargain in good faith. In other basic industries, too, such as auto and steel, the employers are tough and unreasonable. As Phil Murray says, there is a conspiracy by big business against American democracy. To understand this conspiracy, we must remember what happened after World War I in 1919. At that time, to meet the high cost of living, labor unions asked for wage increases. The answer was a lesson. Employers mobilized the full power of the government against the unions. Attorney General A. Mitchell Palmer said he was after communists. 
Under cover of red baiting, he and the employers crippled the trade unions. In two years, one third of the membership was lost. Big business was in control. It ran the government. It brought us to 1929. Do this, and this, and this. Eight groups control the American economy, not only because of their concentration of wealth, but through their strategic ownership of basic industries. Every consumer and every businessman in America hands over a percentage of their earnings to these eight groups, often without knowing it. This is what is meant by big business. This is what is meant by their control of American economy. Big business is international. There were similar groups in Germany, Japan, Italy, England, France, Holland, Belgium, Spain, and smaller countries. Through colonial rule or subservient governments, they control raw materials and markets in most of the world. This is the big league in world business. Its name is imperialism. It leads to war, as Hitler's story shows. For Hitler had a dream that his big business should dominate the world. He called his dream the new order. Foreign big business was weakened during the war, and today American big business is the strongest. And they have a dream to dominate the world. They call their dream the American century. The American century means the century of big business instead of the century of the common people.